true propositions exist. If atheism is true, it follows that atheism is false. Supposing that atheism is not a proposition, so it cannot be either true or false, is a category error. Whether any belief, and disbelief is itself a belief, is true or false, is relevant to the demonstrable reality that it is a belief. This discussion will treat atheism as the proposition that God does not exist. In a more general sense, the vast majority of those who claim to be atheists would also claim that the proposition nothing supernatural exists is true. The same claim, in different terms, is that only the physical exists is true. To make either proposition is to assume that true propositions exist. They must exist, as they are necessary to assert that they do exist, or self-refuting that they do not exist. Certain propositions must be true, as our lives, thought patterns and interactions are all based upon them. Without them, reality would be absurd. Likewise, logical laws such as both X and not X cannot be true at the same time and in the same way, the law of non-contradiction, also exist. To claim that the law of non-contradiction is invalid would be to rely upon it being valid. If a person was brought to trial for murder based upon DNA samples from the scene matching those from them, and the attorney claimed that their DNA continues to change so on the day was not identical to the day the samples, and the jury was comprised of relativists, they would agree that one's DNA can change. Even a relativist is compelled to use very basic deduction and induction, which rely upon absolute premises, to infer relativism. The only way for anybody to be a consistent relativist would be to abandon reason, logic, so true propositions, and be literally unreasonable. True propositions aren't contingent upon mankind. The proposition there are no human beings was true before mankind existed. That I am presently writing this is now a true proposition, despite nobody formulating such a proposition. The scientific method would fail in the absence of true propositions, so Roger Bacon would not have dealt with the, some of the oversights of Aristotle and Peirce, then gone on to establish the principles that have brought us the technology to allow the Joe Average of today to live like a king of Rogers' times. Logical laws existed before mankind. The earth is spherical and the earth is cubical could not both be simultaneously true either before mankind existed or now. We are not the measure of all things. Propositions themselves, not whatever words are used to describe them, occupy no volume, have no mass, possess no energy, and are not limited to certain time frames, so are not at all physical. If the universe did not now exist, the proposition there is no universe would be true. To claim of a table or chair or barrel it just exists, implying that there is no explanation for its existence, would be no less ludicrous than claiming that there is no explanation for the existence of any specific proposition. It is not reasonable to dismiss the logical principle of sufficient reason, as you might do a taxi driver who has brought you to your destination. If true propositions are merely brute fact, why would the ponds come from which we supposedly evolved be in touch with true propositions? How could that possibly have assisted their survival? Likewise, natural science includes an often unspoken assumption that nature is entirely physical. Limiting scientific investigation to solely the physical is an artificial restriction, so is not natural, 
It is also not science, as it has built-in confirmation bias. Propositions must draw their nature from, or be a part of, an entity which is timeless, is not limited to the physical, occupies no volume of space, and is metaphysically necessary. A timeless entity must always exist, so a shorthand term for it would be existent. As time, space and physical entities self-evidently now exist, this existent must also have the intention and the ability to make this all happen. Yes, this is personal. No physical only entity has ever had intent. No brick intended to become part of a building. No block of chocolate intends to be eaten. No banner intends to be read. No sheet music intends to be played. No shoes intend to be walked in. If your own enduring self-awareness was a physical only entity, it would not be enduring, instead it would be a series of objects each somehow slightly changed, so you would not have been able to comprehend the preceding syllogism. In comprehending it, you are demonstrating that reality includes entities other than the solely physical. In logical parallel to that, as it is necessary that the existent has always existed, and as it is always communicated with mankind, subjectively it communicates with us now, yet mankind have not always existed, that rules out any solo entity, and the any entity contingent upon mankind. Goodbye, all idols and images. As this existent has paid a colossal price to recover us from lethal terminal rebellion, unselfish love is intrinsic to it. Unselfish love cannot be a solo event, so there is more than one existent, thus enabling unselfish love to have been expressed before mankind existed. Connecting the dots, the god, hated by many atheists, so they are actually misotheists, does not actually exist. Effectively, they are despising a highly polarised edition of themselves. A selfish, controlling, insecure person, they are not despising the necessary and uncreated existent. So now we come to a very pivotal question. It is a yes-no question, a closed question, and is exceptional in that either a yes answer or a no answer is not possible. A key premise of the question excludes both responses by removing a dependency necessary for every proposition. If God did not exist, would the proposition God does not exist be true? If God did not exist, the proposition itself would not exist, so it could not be true. Ergo, it is necessary that God exists for you to be able to claim that he doesn't exist or to make any other claim.